I have been meaning to catch up with you, but I know how busy you have been, Mark Tremonti. So when I heard you were available to Zoom hang with me, I was so super excited that we get to talk about Tremonti Singh Sinatra because I don't know if you remember, but it was August of 2021 and mm -hmm. we were Zooming about marching in time and you said, you know, I just may blow everybody's mind one day and do a Sinatra covers record. Frank is the inspiration for my singing life. And then bam, May 27th, we are getting Tremonti sings Sinatra. So this is incredible. Um, so where do we start? Uh, uh, 527, we get it. You're partnering with National Down Syndrome Society and you have a new charity organization called Take a Chance for Charity. So kind of catch me up here. Yeah. So about three years ago, um, I became obsessed with Frank Sinatra. I mean, I was always a fan, but I became obsessed with singing like him. And then uh, a few years into it, I'm like, what am I going to do with this manager, Tim? I, I, I have no outlet. And then um, me and my wife uh, found out we were having a baby and uh, we went to an appointment where they had told us that she was going to have Down syndrome. So it was one of those moments where I was like, um, this was for a reason. I was obsessed with doing this for a reason. Frank Sinatra raised over a billion dollars for charity. And I want to uh, follow in his footsteps and do a record in his name and, and start my own charity. And, and uh, part, so we partnered with, well, we partnered with NDSS, so it's their charity organization. But I'm starting an organization called Take a Chance for Charity that will challenge other artists of any sort to anybody with a platform. It could be a radio host like yourself. It could be, it could be an athlete, an actor, a band, anybody in a band uh, to do something that their fan base would never see coming to raise money for charity. And of course, everything inspired by Sweet Stella. I see her in the background. Yes, yes, I see her right in the background here. there. Oh, look at her. Look at her. <laughs> Those big blue eyes. Oh, my gosh. She's adorable. And here's what I love, too. I was watching the, uh, the video on your website, and I love when you start singing. She, her whole world opens up. It's, oh, yeah. it's not always when you're talking to her, when you're talking, she responds like any other baby would when you start singing. I mean, her face, her expression is oh, amazing. Yeah. So you want to talk about meant to be, meant to be. It is so meant to be. And she's so connected in the zone too. Uh, NDSS too, by the way. Uh, works to advocate for individuals with Down syndrome and their families. They're a phenomenal organization. I've been reading up on them ever since I found out that you were involved with them. And, you know, you're talking to Jersey here. Frank is Jersey. He's ours. Yes, yeah, absolutely he is. <laughs> yeah, he, he's ours. So when I first heard this project, I mean, I knew you're a perfectionist and you're Mr. Music. Music just kind of flows through you. But I have to say, the exceeding of everybody's expectations on this, I love you know, you recorded with the Sinatra touring band. So I love seeing also in the video, their reaction to things. And I think it was, was it Mike Smith, who's the band leader who said, yes. who said he Googled you and he <laughs> YouTubed you. And of course, what comes up is like you at some metal <laughs> Tremonti festival, like the crowd's like, like everybody's moshing. And the guy's like, uh, okay, this is gonna be challenging. So what was it like for you when you walked into this incredible place with these guys? How did you feel? I, it was amazing. You know, it's, um, everybody asks, are you, were you nervous? And I said, absolutely not. Even my buddy who filmed all this stuff was like, hey, I know you're saying you're not nervous, but just for this, say you were, because it's going to make it more, <laughs> in, it's going to make it more interesting. Because he, you know, he, he films like reality TV and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't really nervous because I practiced nonstop for this. I couldn't have practiced another minute to, to know any more than I, than I knew when I tracked. Um, but also, what's, are people going to say, you did a terrible job raising money for charity? You know, And that's one of the points I want to get across with Take a Chance for Charity. It's the green light to do whatever you want artistically. Nobody's going to judge you for it because you're raising money for charity, which you know, is just a win-win for everybody. Um, but when I walked into that studio, First thing I remember is I wanted to, I see all these guys coming in, all these older gentlemen, stars, these, these legends, and um, I wanted to go warm up. So I go upstairs to the green room. There's no doors. There's no nothing. There's nowhere to hide. So I had to warm up my vocals with all these guys coming in and out of the building. So, you know, that was my introduction to them. And then I got called downstairs. Mike Smith's like, hey, Mark, come in here. And we did Luck Be a Lady first. 
and the, the vocals are really what keeps the tempo of that song going. So I had to sing that song in a room full of 17 guys without, you know, they hadn't heard a peep from me other than me warming up upstairs. So it was an epic moment. I've got it all on, on film. So was it Tim, Tim Turnier, who, yep. um, you know, works with you and manages you, um, who actually sort of started that ball rolling, getting that band together? Because I remember reading that Tim took guitar lessons from Dan McIntyre, who played with um, Frank. So because the way that you did it, I mean, it couldn't have been more perfect. You know, it wasn't sort of like you decided to do a Sinatra covers record and it's just a, a Sinatra cover. I mean, it's yeah. it's so beyond that. So Tim kind of worked his magic and then sort of did one thing lead to another thing lead to another thing. It was a huge project. It was a huge undertaking. And Tim, I could not have done this without Tim. He, uh, his teacher when he was a kid was 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 Dan McIntyre. And so he... He, he's like, I have the in with him. Um, so then he set up a meeting with Mike Smith, his band leader, and they had lunch. And um, they said, can your boys sing? And Tim had never heard me sing Sinatra, but he believed in me. So he's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I sent Tim a, a, a voice memo of me singing some Sinatra just to show him that, you know, he's, you know, he can believe in the, in the project himself. Um, it wasn't only just organizing, those guys organizing the Frank Sinatra uh, musicians, but getting the approvals from this, the Frank Sinatra estate is almost like get, you know, getting the approvals from the president of the United States. You know, it's, 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 it's near impossible. So it, that took a lot of doing and I'm so honored to be in the group of folks that they've given the green light to use his name and likeness, you know, cause these are guys like Tony Bennett and Michael Buble. Um, they don't do this, but I think when they saw that we were coming to the plate with, the original, the original musicians and the fact that we were doing it for charity and they got to hear a couple of the songs. So we did two songs first and then two sessions with six songs at a time. I think those two songs first were kind of my testing, my, my testing grounds there. So once I passed that first test, that's when we really dove in. So you have like this Sinatra notebook too yes I, i'm very like interested in the sinatra notebook and that sort of was kind of something that was your constant companion during yes. this and you, you seem to have really it, it gave you some confidence you felt very comfortable with everything that you were doing because you sort of referred to the sinatra notebook so when did you start the sinatra notebook how long has it been yeah. with you and and how important was it to this project so i picked my favorite picture to put on the front and it's That's blue, the beauty. All, yeah. Oh, all yeah. blue eyes. And I would just, um, so my son Pearson have, has soccer practice and during COVID parents weren't allowed to get out of the cars. So I would some, and he was on two teams. So I would have to sit there for three hours, drive 45 minutes to practice 45 minutes back. So on my way there, I would sing through my Sinatra set list. And then when I was at practice, I would have my laptop and I would listen to the song and I would, just for one, one song in three hours, I'd go over and over and over it. I would type out the words, how he pronounced, you know, how he pronounced them, how he phrased them. I would move the song before or after the one or take breaks. And I would, I would mark where he'd throw his vibratos and how much air he would use and how much, where he would take a breath. And every, every little nuance of what he did, I tried to write my notes down. So when I sang them over and over, it would become muscle memory for me. And, uh, I was, you know, in the studio, I still looked at those notes, but it was mostly muscle memory at that point. Now when I'm in the car singing along, because now I have to practice again, because I have my first show uh, May 14th, which I'm really excited about. So that's, uh, I got to start practicing again. So when you see, you know, the faces um, of the guys in the band, mm -hmm. not only when you're working with them, but after, I mean, they were just so impressed blown away and almost like gobsmacked in a way because you could see how surprised they were they kept saying things like you did your homework mark is the real deal i mean and it was like being pleasantly surprised for them when all was said and done so what did you take out of sort of that final note of the final tune the final day that you recorded from those guys because when you saw the sheer um i don't even want to say like joy but contentment in mm -hmm them playing those notes, you could see how in the zone the players were. What was that like for you and how did that feel on that final day? 
it was incredible. It's like I was, I was a member of the family at that point. You know, I was part of the group. I was part of the gang, you know, and we were comfortable with one another. They were so complimentary. A lot of the guys would say, we need to take this on the road. Um, so to get their approvals was just, you know, second to none in, in, in my opinion. It was, uh, it was nuts. And then, you know, they loosened up and started telling me stories about Frank Sinatra and their times on the road. And I got all, all kinds of cool stories. And, uh, you know, it's just such an honor just to be even um, in the room with them, but to have their approval and have put smiles on their face and, and watching them. Some of these guys haven't played together in 30 years. So seeing them come back together was such a huge thing for me as well. Yeah, I mean, because see, just seeing them and they were so, you know, just it was like they, they sort of took this journey with you and they were absolutely completely blown away. I mean, just completely blown away by it. They were so nice and so generous and so uh, complimentary. Like I said, when we did Luck Be a Lady and That's Life first, um, as everybody was packing up and leaving, about every other guy would come up and be like, hey, you did a good job. You know, I didn't know what to expect, but, but I, was, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Thanks, thanks for doing a good job and thanks for doing your homework kind of a thing. Because these guys get hired to do all these, these sessions and I'm sure there's um, a lot of big band guys that have done the Sinatra thing. and, and um, I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible. You know, I don't, I didn't want this to be some big production. That's all polished. I want And they didn't know what deal. to expect. You know, it sort of yeah. wasn't like Harry Connick Jr. Or Michael Buble, you know, someone who they would have had, you know, some sensibility of how they were going to present these songs. You know, they only yeah. had you on the Google, on the YouTube. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I give them a lot of credit for being like, uh, yeah, okay, we're going to take to the studio with this guy, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, well, they knew it was for, you know, and that's another thing. They knew it was for charity. So that's why they got into the door. Yes. Once I had them in the door, that's when I had to make them believers. And now yes. that they're believers, we're going to take it on the road, hopefully. Uh, so, Mark, you said that this, uh, this whole charitable aspect is just something that has changed your life and it's going to be with you forever. Explain a little bit about that as well. So my daughter was diagnosed with Down syndrome while she was in the womb. And that's when I had the idea of doing this record. And then um, she was also diagnosed with a, a heart, a heart defects. Um, and so she just had open heart surgery, um, about two and a half months ago. And it was one of the most traumatic, most stressful things I've ever dealt with. It was the most stressful thing I've ever dealt with in my entire life. Um, the, the time prior to the surgery was the worst time of my life. And the days after were the best times of my life. Now I can't complain about a thing because she bounced back so quickly. Um, and, uh, I'm so blessed, but, um, but now she, it's a huge responsibility. She's the most loved little girl in the world, but she's also the most cared after. Like she has to go to, uh, therapies every day. Um, I'll, I'll get up and I'll do my interviews and do my studio work. My, my wife will take her to speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy. She does these, um, talk tool sessions and, um, with, with children with Down syndrome, they hit their milestones um, mostly later than, than um, other kids do. So you want to see them thrive. You have to stay on top of it. And I just were, you know, I wanted to start this organization to raise money for NDSS because imagine a family who doesn't have the funds or the time to do this. It would just break my heart to see these kids. Um, and it's vital in the first three years to really get, stay on top of it. And if, if you miss that window, um, you never know um, what the outcome will be. So I wanted to make sure that families that are in the same boat that we are, are taken care of as much as we can help out. And she just had a, a first birthday, correct? She just turned one on March turned 9th. One. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And when I read she needed a heart surgery at, what was it, 10 or 11 months old? Yeah. Um, oh, my heart went out to you because the stress of that um, no, is was... just insane. It was the worst moment of my life. Leading honestly. up to that, waiting yeah. for the day where she yeah. actually has to go to surgery is just absolutely unimaginable. It was excruciating. It was terrible. Because you look at this pure little angel of a baby and then you she have to is. hand her off to, to these surgeons that are, it, it, surgeons are angels walking the earth, the ones that, that worked on her. Um, but before the surgery, you're handing her off to pretty much strangers and, and they had to bypass her heart, you know, and... Uh, it was, uh, it was definitely, uh, I had to find some strength to get through that. But now that I'm through it, I want to talk to other families that have, have to do with the same thing and tell them that you can get through it. It's not, uh, 
you know, it's a very common thing with, with children with Down syndrome and they can get through that surgery um, quickly. And, and she, she did. And uh, I remember we, we went to these breakfasts where they have all these families that meet. Any family who has a child under two will, will have a breakfast together, meet one another so we can have support groups. And I saw this mother who was pregnant and she looked like she was just as scared as a person could be. And everybody was trying to talk to her. You know, I, cho I told her, I'm like, look at my little baby over there. She had open heart surgery like five weeks ago and she's sitting up and smiling. You know, this, these, you can get through all these things. And um, it's almost like she didn't want to hear it. You know, everybody was telling her how easy and how great and how much of a blessing it is. But until you experience it, you don't realize how great it can be. And, uh, you know, I want to, I would like to talk to more people that are in the same situation about that. Yeah. Yeah. The mission, I mean, the mission is real and my gosh, it is so vital. And we get a great piece of music. We get yeah, an amazing, was, amazing piece of music. Yeah. It was a dream come true for me. Absolutely. Uh, it's so incredible when everything aligns itself. Um, you know, there's just a feeling of, of happiness and hope, you know, that sort of comes out of you that I think we all kind of need these days. And I think that this is one of those incredible projects and certainly one that's going to be with you for a long, long time. And, uh, uh, inspired by sweet little Miss Stella. She is just the cutest. <laughs> and when I see you and her together, oh God, <laughs> I was telling you, I said, I, I was texting a friend of mine and I said, you've got to watch if you haven't seen this video of Mark Tremonti and his little girl, because it's one of those, I'm not crying, you're crying moments. <laughs> because the connection, oh, yeah. between the, the connection between fathers and daughters is just amazing. But the connection between the two of you is, um, uh, you know, again, I don't want to start crying. So, um, <laughs> I, it's That's just the toughest, the toughest thing for me in this project is to not get emotional. I yes, try to say, you're stay trying business, to hold it all together. You know, I'm, I'm doing my prep for this and I'm like, all right, how am I going to really talk about this with Mark without getting totally emotional when I see that connection between him and his daughter? Because the two of you together, it's magic. You know, when she looks at you, the whole world opens up when she looks in your eyes. So that's what it's absolutely. all about, my friend. Absolutely. It's all about. it's all about. Absolutely. She's definitely made me a stronger man. Yeah. May 27th. Uh, wow, uh, Tremonti sings Sinatra. I'm trying to figure out, because, you know, we put these on, on our website and uh, we air the interviews, of course, and I'm trying to figure out which tune to play. You know, like, what is your favorite? Because we've got 14 Sinatra classics. Like, was there one that was just the best for you? Um, Jeez. A favorite? I mean, I know it's so hard. It's very hard. You know, um... You know, I want to play, you know, something that people are familiar with maybe, but the people that buy the record dig deeper. So I think for familiarity, my way, yeah. I think that's a, you know, we did it very different from the original version, but it's, you know, it's familiar territory for a Sinatra fan. I think my favorite vocal performance might be uh, I Fall in Love Too Easily. I knew you were going to say that. I knew yeah, you were going to say that. Yeah, that was a fun one. I almost didn't sing that song because uh, I thought all the rock fans would be like, that sappy love song, <laughs> you know, but. I just loved it, so I, so I recorded it. I'm glad we did, because it uh, could be my favorite vocal take. Wave no. is another one I really love. Everyone yeah. has like m m such mucho respect for everything that you've done on this record, so no one's, oh, no one's looking at it as love songs <laughs> or sappy anything. I mean, it's just incredible. And what you did, look, Mark Tremonti, greatest living guitar player around right now. Um, everything you do is perfection. So there's no real surprise, you know. Uh, I was surprised for like five seconds and I was like, well, it's a Mark Tremonti project. What do you think it's going to be? <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's, uh, I can't wait to come on tour there near you so hopefully you can see it live. Yeah, I cannot wait. Mark, I love you. All the best to the family. Give Stella a big, big kiss for us and uh, stay well, stay healthy. And I cannot wait to see you. And we can't wait for the record. Two days before yeah. my birthday. It's going to be like a birthday present. Oh, yes. Well, much, much love. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'll see you soon. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway.